Hi everyone, and thank you for joining this course on testing complex intelligent systems and autonomous vehicles. We live in a very complex world surrounded by a large number of intelligent systems. In our everyday life, they help us plan our day, they help us get to our desired destination in the most efficient way, they even go so far as help us choose the right words for our emails, documents, and messages. AI systems not only tell us what time to leave the house to make it for an appointment, but also have a direct influence on in our choices. Namely, they make suggestions as to what books to read, what movies to watch, what music to listen to, and in a bit more intrusive way, what ads to see. In other words, AI is already affecting our lives quite profoundly. And as the technology improves, it takes on more and more serious functions, such as driving vehicles, helping diagnose serious conditions, and solving other vital issues. And this raises the question of what happens if something suddenly goes wrong. If we really trust the forecast of software products becoming increasingly complex as we go, then the likelihood of some of them failing becomes even higher. How do we make sure that AI doesn't harm its creator, the humans? Needless to say, the quality of AI systems depends on us. Verifying whether the real behavior of the system corresponds to what is expected from it is called software testing. For AI to go in the right direction, its careful and comprehensive testing is highly necessary. You might ask what's the difference between AI testing and traditional testing, and why does this type of system under test need special attention? It's a valid question. Um, AI systems are known as deterministic. This basically means that the same input will not produce the same output every time. Also, because of the trend of increasing complexity that we just talked about, AI systems do not typically exist in isolation, rather they are often embedded in some higher level platforms and function as their part. When we talk about the quality of such systems, it's important to remember not only to test their performance in isolation, but also to test their interoperability with the rest of the components within the system. It's important to understand that software testing as a process does not guarantee that we have eliminated all possible defects when performing our checks. But such an activity, if properly organized, significantly reduces the risks of potential system failure. So hopefully I've made it clear by now that AI systems play such a crucial role in our lives already that their further development is probably hard to imagine without adapting the testing approaches to their tasks. That's why lots of initiatives have recently appeared in, at the intersection of AI and software testing. We see more and more certification exams and conferences. More and more contests are being held at this new scientific and professional field. If you're interested in learning a bit more on how far this goes, you can check out A4Q, the Alliance for Qualification, and their AI and software testing exam. On top of that, Andrew Eng's textbook on machine learning will also be a good source of information as it gives insights into some of the typical properties of AI systems and approaches to building them. It's worth noting the AI test conference that grows in size and scope every year. Check out their website. This year's submissions are still open and you still have plenty of time to do your research and participate. Our company has in fact been actively involved in the research at the intersection of AI and software testing. We've participated in the conference since its inception in 2019. This year, for the first time, the organizers decided to hold an additional challenge on testing autonomous vehicles. The challenge is supported by ExactPro on the organizational side of things. If you choose to participate, feel free to sign up your teams before March 15th. At this, your first deliverable will have to be submitted by April 30th. One of the goals of the course is to help you guys apply the skills you get during the course to a real life project. Again, you don't have to do it. You don't have to participate in the course. You can just get to grips with testing complex AI-based systems and driverless vehicles to the point that the course allows you to. But we just want you to know that you don't have to stop here and there are more doors that the course opens. Now to the organizational aspects of the course. The course will be taught by ExecPro experts. We will try and follow the plan of sending you these lectures at the end of each week for watching at your own pace. Each lecture will be accompanied by Q&A sessions where we can address some of the questions you have, but also make sure you understand the material as well as we expect you to. 
In addition, once a week we will meet for interactive workshops. All in all, we are planning eight lectures and eight workshops that will take place all through the end of April. As we go along, we're hoping for you to help us make the course even better. So if you have any feedback, feel free to share it in the comments or in our Telegram chat. So this first lecture serves as an introduction and aims to give you a better understanding of what's coming in the next couple of months. I'll tell you what the course is about, uh, who it's for, what you will learn, and what results you can expect. I hope this covers most of the questions you have at this point. If not, then we can address the rest in our Telegram channel. So what's this course about? On the one hand, it deals with software testing, and on the other, it looks at driverless cars as an example of a system under test. I'm going to call it an SUT from this point on. This course will allow you to understand some important principles for working with this and other complex intelligent systems. For example, how to approach testing when the SUT is characterized by complexity, non-determinism, and lack of clear criteria as to correct and incorrect behavior of the system under test. Can such testing be automated, and what are the requirements for test tools in this case? Who is this course for? It's designed for a general audience interested in software testing, but it also hopes to get the attention of IT students and specialists already working in this area and solving or getting ready to solve non-standard tasks. The course materials do not require any special knowledge, although we do expect you to have some background information on IT systems and an understanding of how they function. What will you learn in this course? As a result of taking this online course, you will get acquainted with the notion of AI-based software, the risks associated with it, and hopefully start seeing eye to eye with us in terms of the outstanding need of testing AI thoroughly and extensively. We will also introduce you to the fundamentals of software testing, its basic concepts, approaches, and metrics. From a practical point of view, we will try our best to teach you how to apply the relevant test methods, uh, use the necessary test tools, set up a test environment, create test scenarios, and execute them, as well as analyze the results of your test runs. In this case, the vehicle simulator and the road simulator will demonstrate how to test one intelligent system with the help of another similar system. What will this course give you? Well, the point of any educational initiative is knowledge transfer. In terms of the knowledge that you will be getting from this course, its uniqueness comes from the unique combination of the two areas we focus on. Plus, you can always extrapolate this knowledge and transfer it onto a wide range of industry tasks related to software testing. As far as more tangible bonuses, all the students who have successfully completed the course will receive a certificate of completion. The requirements for obtaining a certificate are quite straightforward. Just attend the classes and the Q&A sessions and complete all the tasks, including the final task. Active participation in the course will be noted. This includes questions to the lecturers and mentors and respecting all the deadlines. The most active participants will receive a gift from ExactPro um, in addition to the certificate. Last but not least, another bonus you get by participating in the course is getting ready for the International IEEE Autonomous Driving AI Test Challenge and getting a cash prize from ExactPro if your team gets picked in the qualifying round. Please note that our course schedule is designed with the competition deadlines in mind. At this, the final practical task will be a simplified version of deliverable one of the challenge and the course program aims to increase your chances of success in the challenge. We see the contents of this course as two parallel tracks, namely theory and practice. So let's take a closer look at the full program. The first lecture is today's introductory session, and that's almost a done deal. The next lecture will focus on self-driving cars. As an introduction to the topic, we will define autonomous vehicles, as well as talk about the design and technology underpinning them. To understand the advances made in this field, we will discuss the levels of autonomy as classified by the Society of Automotive Engineers, the SAE. Then we will focus on the development history and the current industry experience of testing autonomous vehicles. Feel free to start looking at some of the external links to get a more solid grasp of the subject. First, there are online courses from the University of Toronto on Coursera and from Baidu Apollo on Udacity, so feel free to check these out if you wish. 
For more of a general intro, there's quite an informative Wikipedia article with a section on testing self-driving vehicles. Lecture 3 will concentrate on the application programming interface. We will define API and its main functions and review its most common types and their industry context. We will emphasize the importance of testing the API as a special level of interaction with multi-component systems. In the next lecture on the basics of software testing, we will talk about the fundamental principles of software testing, such as the absence of errors fallacy. This basically states that software testing can show the presence of defects, but cannot prove their absence. Naturally, we'll talk about other fundamental principles as well. We will discuss the types and levels of testing and the ways different schools understand testing tasks and methodologies. Rex Black's book on the fundamentals of software testing is probably the best source if you want to dig deeper into this topic. There is a more concise version of the basics and that is featured in the ISTQB Software Tester Foundation level syllabus. You can also check out the ExecPro video course reviewing ISTQB in a really accessible way. That's available on our ExecPro Systems YouTube channel. There's also a great selection of materials on the Black Box software testing website. I could keep going, but I think this would be sufficient for now. Lecture 5 will be entitled Build Software to Test Software. This lecture dwells on automation, its definition and applicability to different functional areas. As for test automation in particular, we'll review test tools and their types in relation to the basic types of software testing, as well as various requirements that the technology supporting them has to meet. We'll also touch upon the role of humans in the automation process. Basically, all of the sources I mentioned earlier are good as extra, extra sources for this lecture because all of them have sections on test tools. The next lecture raises the questions of reliability and safety. We'll start with software quality characteristics and go on to discussing the risks associated with software in different functional areas. Finally, we'll talk about the regulatory requirements that for reliability and safety of automated systems, as well as the ethical implications of AI systems. At the lecture on software defects and metrics, you will learn about software quality, the concepts of error, defect, and software failure. We'll discuss identifying software defects as the main goal of software testing. Then we'll move on to the quantitative software quality characteristics, namely their metrics themselves, their types, their roles in the testing process and test management, um, their informative value and influence on the decision-making process. Finally, the lectures will wrap up with the topics of test coverage and negligence in software. We'll review the concepts of negligence and malpractice in software development and software testing, the issue of liability for the consequences of software malfunction, as well as the principle that exhaustive testing is impossible. We'll also introduce the notion of test coverage and types of test coverage. Parallel to the lectures, we'll meet for practical workshops. These will kick off with the one on launching the LGSVL road simulator. We'll start with an intro on the multi-agent traffic simulator developed by LG's research division, and that is based on the Unity cross-platform video game environment. We'll install and launch the simulator and take a look at the user interface. At the second workshop, we will install the interactive Python development environment and set it up for creating Python programs. We will learn how to use the LGSVL simulator programming interface to control object placement and vehicle movement in a loaded scene, obtain configuration and sensor data, control the weather and the time of day, and more parameters. Next up will be a workshop on unit testing. We will learn to develop unit tests to isolate individual parts of the program to assess their performance. We'll look into creating and executing tests, getting reports using open source PyTest and uh, PyUnit frameworks. Workshop 4 will be dedicated to behavior-driven development. We'll review the BDD software development methodology and the use of Gherkin when defining requirements, use cases, and acceptance testing criteria. Workshop 5 is all about data-driven and keyword-driven testing. We'll look into building frameworks for testing complex protocol systems uh, using data-driven and keyword-driven approaches. Moving on, Workshop 6 will focus on data analysis and reporting. We'll talk about processing large areas of test result information. 
We'll also learn to analyze distributions, trends, and find anomalies in the data. Workshop 7 is where it gets to the good stuff. We'll build and run the Apollo Driverless Vehicle Simulator. We'll deal with Docker containers and set up the connection gateway to the LGS VL road simulator. We'll run the two simulators together and monitor their work. Finally, Workshop 1 will concentrate on modeling test scenarios. We'll create some code controlling the Apollo and the LGS VL simulators to model behavior scenarios using the selected maps, uh, autonomous vehicles, and road situations. We'll run our tests and create a test report. That's it for our long-term plan. What do we do now? Our first Q&A session will take place on Wednesday, March 3rd. How do you get ready for it? We ask you to prepare questions based on this lecture. We will keep a record of your questions and that will add to your academic rating, or which will give you a chance to get a gift in the middle of the course. A word of advice about online communication, you wanna join with your real name and last name, otherwise it will make it a little complicated for us to track your progress. We also expect you to be familiar with, the, with some of the materials I've shared links to in today's talk. Also be prepared for our experts to ask questions based on this video as well. On Friday, March 5th, we'll be waiting for you for the first hands-on session on working with the LGSVL road simulator. After the session, we'll send out the next lecture. If the idea of participating in the IEEE Autonomous Driving AI Test Challenge seems exciting to you, we will support your decision in every way we can. It'll definitely be a unique and very valuable experience. Our course should provide a powerful skill set applicable to any further research and any further work. You have until March 15th to sign up and until April 30th to submit your first deliverable. Read more about the challenge on the organizer's website. Um, any questions you have about taking part in the challenge can be addressed during the first Q&A session. Before we wrap this up, I'll just note that you can feel free to join the IEEE community groups for news and updates on the challenge if you do choose to participate. We've also created a Telegram chat specifically for the students of this course. This is a place to ask your questions and chat with the instructors. The links are in the slide and in the description below the video. You're welcome to join us. Thanks for your attention and I look forward to seeing you in our virtual classroom, on our social media and uh, in our messenger. Thanks again for watching and I hope you enjoy the course.